Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Yes, hello, everybody. All right. We are going to get started in just a minute. We're waiting for everyone to come into the class. All right. So it's 2.01 and I see some people coming in. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to Drawing for Animators and Illustrators. My name is Larissa Morantz and I will be your instructor. And I also want to introduce my lovely teacher assistant, Eden Barber. Eden, say hello. Hello everybody. Um, some of you I recognize and some of you are new and that's really exciting. Welcome, these are always really fun classes and you're gonna learn a lot. I always learn a lot no matter how many times I sit and kind of moderate the classes. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, it's gonna be fun. So um, thanks for being here. For those of you who have uh, registered for the class, thank you so much for being a registered student. And for those of my scholarship students, thank you for being here. And um, thank you to the registered students for helping um, make this possible for our scholarship students because it was um, because of you and because of our many donors um, and sponsors that um, help to support us. <laughs> we are running this class. So I see everyone is in the chat talking about where they're from and thank you because I do wanna know where you guys are all from. Um, we have Diana from Nigeria, Bella's from California, Detroit, Michigan, Portland, Oregon. Hello, Sarah, Seattle, Brooklyn, Philippines. Galing, galing. Okay, kumusta? London, England, HTX. Aaliyah, what's HTX? I'm not sure, Brooklyn. Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> ET, Connecticut, Indianapolis, Richmond, Virginia, Toronto, Trinidad. This is really exciting. This, I I will, I will say this again because this is, yes, Houston, Texas. This is the thing that I did not anticipate. And I mentioned this before in my other classes. If you're new, I will say it again. The amazing thing about this ridiculous global pandemic is that it has given new opportunities for teaching and opened up my um, eyes to the possibility of teaching people outside of my immediate area. So I've been teaching for, um, gosh, over a decade now. Um, started teaching at Laguna College of Art. Actually, no, I started teaching with OC Art Studios um, as an after school enrichment program, taught that. Um, Started that actually by teaching art classes to my then five-year-old in the garage. That kind of spawned into teaching after-school classes at my children's elementary school, which then grew to teaching art classes at other elementary schools, which then brought in out to other school districts where I was then hiring other in art instructors to teach alongside me. Um, I was teaching at Laguna College of Art and Design for um, over a decade, teaching figure drawing classes for the animation department. And um, this happened because COVID and um, extending scholarships happened, be happened because of the social unrest that was happening last year during the summer. And um, people started um, reaching out to me to support what I was doing and to support black artists by offering to pay for a full scholarship for one student. And when I realized that all I needed to run a class through Zoom was to make sure that my teaching costs were covered and the costs for all of my other instructors were covered, understanding how to, you know, the cost for putting together the course curriculum, the actual teaching, the time to critique your work and the time that we spend working with you, all of those costs needed to be covered. And once those costs were covered, um, because it's in a Zoom platform, which is this virtual space instead of a brick and mortar space, I thought, you know, why not just open it up to the maximum capacity of my Zoom membership, which is a hundred. So 
once we were able to meet the qualifications to run the class, the minimum, um, the minimum requirements, that's when I realized I can open it to every, everybody and as many people as I wanted to. And I decided to do that particularly for black scholars. And then this year we opened it up to AAPI students as well. So for those of you, thank you for being here. I'm, I'm so happy that you're here. And um, I hope you look forward to um, learning in this hopefully very supportive um, community of artists. Um, we have a Discord community and if, um, Eden, do you mind dropping the link to the Discord in the chat? And just in case you didn't get it, um, as you know, as you may know, I've been going through some um, of the most difficult times of my life uh, right around now, but I'm trudging through it. And I just took a little moment right before class to, to take a breather and you know be present for this amazing thing that's happening. Um, so I may have forgotten to do a few things. So Eden's gonna help me back, um, get my back. She's got my back. So um, she's dropped the link to the Discord uh, server and you can jump in there and introduce yourself. And in the Discord server is where we've been running that Discord server since last year. Um, and every time we run a new class, we have new students. We also have um, our sponsors are in there. Um, we have, um, Actual, actual animators, illustrators who are labeled as mentors in the Discord server. So um, there is an opportunity for you to, um, you know, have access to them in the server. And I thought that was really important thing to have for all of you, especially what I'm trying to do with uplifting and creating this environment where those of you who may not have had access to people like that in the animation and illustration industry. Now you do have a way of, of um, communicating with those people. Um, also really quickly, I do wanna note that we've had um, in the past, we've had um, ask me anything type of um, forums, not really um, more of a chat, in the Discord. And so you can kind of go back and look through those AMAs in the, um, the Discord channels. Um, and you can see the people that have given their input. We had Sierra Lewis, um, who is a visual development um, artist in animation. I think she's, um, I think they're actually working as a creative art director now. We had um, Shara Tuyosa, an illustrator. I also did an AMA in there too. So that information is still there. Um, you can still access that. You can see the questions that were asked and the answers that were responded. So there's a lot of information that you can access there too, as well as um, accessing each other in the community. Um, so there's that. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I think, um, bef but before I begin, I just wanna notice that um, there's a lively thing happening in the chat. I do have my chat window open, but I'm not, totally 100% paying attention to it. So Eden, if you see anything that pops up as a question, if you could just let me know, just pop in and let me know if there is a question that needs to be answered. And um, please, as I mentioned in the, um, the email, if you could please keep the chat professional and on topic. Um, one the first the first classes that I would run, there was, you know, talk about Animal Crossing and like all these other things. And, you know, if Animal Crossing pertains to whatever we're talking about at the moment, that's great, you know, but as long as you can kind of keep it on track and it doesn't kind of go off the rails, that would be really appreciated. Okay. So I've got a couple of things to show you first before we actually get into um, the meat and potatoes of the class. And that is um, how we're gonna communicate with one another. Um, of course, we have the Discord um, that you can access, but we also have the way that we will be providing you information um, in terms of the resources of this class and then how you're going to be um, providing your homework to us, okay? And that's gonna be, through the Google file folder and I'll go over that um, right now. Okay, so let me just switch screens. Also, if, um, I do have the closed captioning um, going. So yes, I just wanna make sure I have that. All righty. Okay. So this is the place where you will be, you will have access to this. 
And this is where you will be living in, <laughs> living virtually um, for our class. Okay, so this is the DFAI, which is short for Drawing for Animators and Illustrators 2021, because of this is the fifth time that I've run this class on top of the already many years that I've taught this class in person. Um, and so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna drop a link to this um, so that you have access to this right now. Share and get link. Anyone on the internet with this link can edit. Yes, um, sign in required. Do I need to change that? Um, no, editor. Okay, so yes, I will do that. I will copy this link. And I'm going to drop this into the chat. And if you want to go ahead and um, you may have to sign into, if you have a Google account, you may have to sign into a Google account. If you have problems accessing this file, please, this file folder, please let me know or please let Eda know and I will figure out what I need to do. Um, but once you get into this file folder, this is where we will be providing you with the resources and you will be dropping your homework and we will be accessing your homework so we can um, look and see what's in there. Okay, so notice it's color coordinated because I'm an artist and I like things pretty. Um, but they're all labeled in terms of your weeks, week one, week two, week three, so on and so forth. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna go through, in the main folder here is two documents, this class links, I did not, not open. Okay. So class links. This is where I will play, paste any links pertinent to whatever we discussed in class. Or I see someone's in there already. That's fantastic. Um, or and not or, but and the class recordings here. So they'll be available on Zoom. I do not have a huge Zoom account. So I most likely have, you don't have to worry about this, but I will be transferring the files from zoom to another cloud service so as long as it's a as long as it lives as a link that you can access the links will be posted here if i have to move them and download them into the google drive i will do that and then you will i will do my best to inform you about what's happening with the access to the recording so that you can access them i know some of you are here and i know some of you will be watching this on the recording and that's how you will always be watching them um and that's fine we have not everybody is going to be in class in person and that's okay that's the way this class is set up so that you can um, even if you can't make it to class that's fine you can still access the recordings the recordings will always be available here in this link right here so don't wait for an email actually the first week i will give you an email with the link to this again um, and this is where you will go to access the, the cl class recordings and any links um, pertinent to what we talked about in class okay now, I also, real quick, Larissa, yes. I made a tab on Discord for this class that is uh, drawing for animators, and I also pinned the link to that Google Drive if you ever lose it. Thank you so much. I yes. appreciate that. I've not done that yet. Oh, see, I, I'm so glad that Eden's here. Okay, thank you, Eden. All right, um, this this file or this document is your homework submissions file. So this is how you want to submit your homework. And I, I'm going to ask you to please to submit your homework in this fashion. It's just a naming format, okay? But this way, when your files go into the Google file folder, it's organized. We can see who submitted what, and we also know what it's for, okay? So it just needs to be your first name, underscore, your last name, underscore, and the title of the homework assignment, okay? Um, now, in terms of when do you submit your homework? Well, well, look at all the people that are jumping in there right now. That's fantastic. Um, 10 p.m. Tuesday night, Pacific Daylight Time. Now, whatever time that is for you, you can look that up for your time zone. But the reason why I have it 10 p.m. the night before class is so that I can look at it or your other instructors can look at it and take the time to give you feedback, okay? And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. I also forgot to mention that this class will be taught by myself and we'll have two other instructors. And those two other instructors are Danny Vondere and Caleb Cleveland. Danny Vondere, um, as some of you may have taught, um, taken his class before, he's, yes, they're both very talented. Um, 
Danny Vondere uh, and I, we taught, um, we both taught figure drawing classes and um, he's gonna be teaching the figure drawing uh, portion, which is the next three weeks. I'll come back um, week, what is it? One, two, three, four. Um, I'll come back week five and I'll talk about how to um, draw the figure in space, in perspective. And then Caleb's gonna come in um, for the next three weeks and he's going to talk to you about character design and um, style and, and composition and design. And then I'm gonna come back in and join him. And then we're going to do our final week of, which is um, uh, illustration and critique. So that's the format of this class. And um, that's how it's gonna go. So sometimes the instructor will be me, sometimes it will be Danny, sometimes it will be Caleb, but Eden will always be here. Okay. Now going to this. Um, each week you will want to go into the designated weekly folder. So this is week one. We'll go in here and the resources will be in one file and that's where you can access the information that we provide um, for class. And then there's gonna be a homework submission folder, okay? So I'm gonna go in here real quick. And these are the files that are um, available to you now. I will probably add or maybe edit these um, after the class is done today because I might make some adjustments to this. In fact, I should, I don't have the homework in there as of yet, so I will do that. Um, but you'll be able to access those there, okay? And this is where you'll be submitting your homework. And I have three samples already in here and you can see that they're labeled first name, underscore, last name, underscore with the title of what that particular homework is. And this is just a sneak preview of what your homework assignment is this week. And um, also what I do want to show you is this. I'm gonna, you can change, oh, first off, how do you submit your homework here? You have to go up to new and you're gonna put file upload. So when you click on file upload, this will allow you to open up your, um, your file folder and you can drop in any file that you need and put that in there, okay? Second, when you drop your files in there, this is gonna get really thick but, um, and full. We can change the way this works or this, the way this looks here. Okay, I will be able to see when this has been submitted. Okay, so if you are submitting your homework by the deadline, I will know and it's gonna go in here. In fact, right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna make a new folder right here for late uh, submissions, okay? And the reason why I'm making a folder for late submissions is because after I've gone through the homework that's been put in, um, sometimes people will submit things late and I won't know that I've, I won't be able to find it because I've already gone through the early stuff. Now, does that mean you get special attention? No, it just means that it's just a separate folder for me to, to access and, and find your things, okay? So if you are by chance not able to make it by the deadline, that's fine, just put it in there, okay? So another thing, and this is the really important part of this Google file folder is this aspect here, okay? So when I click on this, um, you'll notice up at the top corner, there's this little um, comment, add a comment. Okay, and this is where Eden, myself, and all of your other instructors are going to be commenting on your work. Okay, so if we have something really quick to say about your work, we'll just, you know, highlight it like this and we'll say, oops, let's see, let's try that again. Okay, highlight an area and then I'll say, hey, this is fab. And comment there. Now, anyone else? can comment on this as well. They can reply. And um, pretty much that's where, that's another place for communication to happen between the students, okay? So yes, as Eden said, please comment on others' work. It's fun to get feedback. Um, it's, and, and please be mindful of being supportive of, you know, of your comments. And also when, we do submit your submit comments, other people can see the comments that we're leaving. So this is where you can learn. This is where we take the virtual classroom and, and create that into more of that in-person feeling that, we, that we're missing in a group 
critique where you are sitting in a classroom and seeing everyone else's work and learning from what everyone else is doing. So in that sense, that's the way that you'll be able to learn from your fellow classmates. And I hope that you utilize that um, ability or that, that option because that's, that's the community. And that is the really the thing about learning online in a community as opposed to learning online, just watching videos and not engaging with other students at the same time. So you'll be struggling with things that other artists are struggling with, or you'll be struggling with things that other artists have gotten down. And you'll be able to learn not just from us, but from all these other uh, students who are, you know, maybe a little bit ahead of you in, in terms of like their, their abilities and skill sets. And, and that's what makes this so great. Everyone is at a different path. Now, another thing that is really important that I want you to remember is I want you to measure your personal ga um, gains, okay? And I don't want you to measure your personal gains comparatively to your classmates, all right? Now, when we do that, what happens? We think, okay, all of these people are so much better than me or all of these people are, they get this and I don't. Um, everyone is on a different path and you're going to see that in this class. But one of the wonderful things about being in a class like this is because everyone is at a different level and you can see and learn from everyone else. And even those that are maybe ahead of, you know, who are a little bit more experienced, who have done a lot of drawing before and are, you know, and, and are just trying to understand, a, a, you know, a few concepts here and there. Your work is going to be inspiring to those who are kind of just on the beginning of this, you know, journey. And that's going to be an, a really amazing thing to have. So be mindful of that. Be mindful of measuring your gains, your personal gains against your own growth, not comparatively to other students. Okay. And that will help you to gain confidence. Okay. In where you are going. All right. So looking and comparing your work to where you were last week, two weeks, a month ago, five months ago, 10 months ago, or whatever. And that's where you really want to be comparing. Not across, you know, not across on the other side of the classroom. I always tell everybody, keep your eyes on your own drawing board. Okay. So having said that, are there any questions before we begin? No. Okay. I think you're doing it. You're doing a good job. All right, good. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm going to be using Clip Studio. I haven't used Clip Studio in a while. I've been starting working on my graphic novel. And so this is the program that I'll be using. Um, how many else, how many other people are using Clip Studio? Raise your hands. Sarah's like, no, not yet. It's okay. Um, this is, a, this is, yeah. And also you can raise your virtual hand because when you raise your virtual hand, that pops you all the way to the front of my gallery of zoom heads. And then I can actually see who is raising your hand instead of just like raising your real life hand. So Jadeja is using it. That's great. Okay. Um, yeah. And Kenya Carter, that's good too. This is a really great program and Tiffany's using it too. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, there's other really fantastic programs, Fire Alpaca, um, Procreate. Oh my God, I'm so jealous of everyone who's using Procreate. I do not have an iPad and I probably will not be getting one. Um, Autodesk Sketchbook is great. Um, this, but you know, all of these programs are really great to have, but I'm using this one. And so that's what I'm gonna be using. Okay, so let's get into it. Drawing for animators and illustrators, strengthening your drawing skills for future entry into the animation and illustration industries. So I know some of you are interested in animation. Some of you are interested in illustration. Some of you may be a little bit of both. Um, some of you, maybe you're not sure, but you're here regardless. So the skills that this class will be implementing are really fundamental drawing skills, okay? And the fundamental drawing skills are important for you if you're going into either of these industries. Um, maybe not as much as illustration as it is in animation, although there are, you know, there are artists who are doing professional work, picture book illustrators, who maybe don't understand a lot of the concepts that are in this class. And some of you are professional picture book illustrators and are going to be in this class because maybe you have, you know, been able to 
create a um, uh, create a career path for you without having to understand these things. And that's fantastic. And that's the beautiful thing about working as an illustrator is that, you know, it's it's about the look and it's about the feeling and the emotion and whether or not your work resonates with an audience. Um, so anyway, this is drawing. 101 today and this is basically going to be like drawing boot camp today so it it's and you saw the file folder of the homework and it's it's going to be kind of I'm not going to say boring maybe it is a little boring but it's it's like push-ups it's like practicing your skills um but the reason why it's important is so that you can learn so that you can draw everything okay and that's the basic of it, the basis of everything. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. The first thing is line. Okay. Introduction to line quality draftsmanship and form. As an animator, your line is the most important thing because when you're animating, you're using your line to um, push the form across the page to make the feeling of something move from one po point to another. Um, and in illustration, you're using your line to create shapes. Now, we're gonna talk about line quality first and foremost here. So let me get a uh, good pencil. Here we go, okay. So um, maybe you draw your lines like this, okay? Kind of a hairy line. Maybe you draw really slowly like this. Um, either way, you're getting some kind of a line down, right? So the thing about line quality and how to improve that is through pencil mileage, okay? And pencil mileage is literally just drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing. And line quality is important in animation because it is through your line that you create the feeling or the illusion of three-dimensional form. And that's where we're going towards. We are going towards creating worlds and universes on a paper, on a page, on a canvas. And how do we do that? And we, the best way to do that is by being able to manipulate and control your medium, okay? Your stylus, your pencil, whatever. Um, Alessandra, did you have a question? No, okay, just you got your hand raised, okay. So what we're gonna talk about is, is line and how you use line to create shape. Okay, so actually before thing, before we get into shape, what I want to do is talk about how to draw a straight line. Okay, how many of you can draw a straight line? Raise your virtual hand or your regular hand. Okay, kind of, sort of, okay. Um, that's great if you can draw a straight line, like a perfect straight line. And if you can't draw a perfect straight line, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it right now. I'm actually gonna show you. Okay, so let me switch. Actually, this time in class, I have a, a, a camera set up. So I'm gonna um, show you how to do it that way. Let me switch real quick. Where did it go? Okay, so there's my black wing pencil and my paper. All right, so when you're drawing a line, um, you want to make sure that, let me just show you how, I, how not to do it. Okay, what we wanna do is we want to control our hand and control our arm Oh, someone's here. Hold on a second. Okay, so what you want to do is we're going to um, put, and if you want to do this with me, if you have a sketchbook right now, that's great. Um, or if you're drawing on your Procreate, or your tablet or whatever you want to do is this. Okay. So drawing not only happens with your hand, it happens with your eyes and it happens with your brain. 
Okay, so when you're drawing a straight line, you want to put a series of X's on your paper, one on one side, one on the other. And what the exercise is going to be is that you're going to draw a straight line from here to there. And when you do that, what you want, what you're going to be doing, what often people are doing is they're looking at their pencil as they draw. Okay. And they're not looking at where they're going. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to put a series of X's on your paper, put your pencil down on one X, and I want you to look at where you are going with your eyes, okay? <laughs> that means you're gonna look here. So instead of looking at your pencil, I want you to look at where you're going. And I want you to then use your hand and draw to that point. And you're gonna do that over and over and over again, okay? Now, you might have a hard time actually connecting. Now, these are these are all straight. They're a little angled, but you know you get it. They are in and of themselves. They are straight. Um, you may have a hard time connecting them. Like maybe you go off a little bit, and that's okay. What you need to do is continually practice that uh, that process so that you're building up. Um, so that you're building up the the muscle, the, 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 the muscle memory, okay, of, of how to do that. Okay, you also want to be able to, do this in one motion. So you can switch, and do them vertically, okay? And when you do them vertically, what you're doing is in another thing that you can do if you're trying to draw straight lines. What I often tell my students is that, okay, you already have a straight line, the straight edge of your paper or your canvas. And um, I'm just gonna start it from over here, okay? So what you wanna do is visually look at the space between your pencil and the edge of your paper. And as you are at the same time drawing from one point to the other and looking at your point. So you're doing two things. You're almost like measuring how far you are away from this edge as you are also looking at this point over here, okay? And you can do that slowly or you can do that quickly. Ooh, okay, well, I missed that, okay. So like that. Now. There's two things about this. This, doing it this way helps you to get into the mindset or the, the actual skill set of drawing a straight line. Okay. Vertically, horizontally. There's another access, there's another um, exercise as well. And the next one does both, okay? So this one, this first, this next one is instead of drawing X's across the page, you're just going to start off at the top of your paper and draw a long straight line that follows the border of your paper and do that as best as you can so that that is straight and parallel with the edge of your paper. And then the next thing you're gonna do is continually draw lines below that. And each line that you draw, you want to make sure that it is parallel, completely parallel with that line. And you wanna do that over and over and over again. And this just takes, this just takes mileage and what you're doing with this process is you are developing eye coordination and hand-eye coordination, and you're creating muscle memory so that you so that you can understand how to do that. Now I'm going to switch my camera real quick. Actually, 
can do this. Okay. okay, here we go. So when you're drawing, you want to be like holding a lot of times in figure drawing, we talk about drawing from your shoulder. Okay. And that means that you're, you're not drawing from your hand. Okay. You're drawing from your shoulder. So what you can do while you're doing this exercise is, and I always tell this to my, my, my children, my, my kids students, as I say, pretend that you like are um, taking a freeze ray gun and you're like kind of freezing your whole arm so that it doesn't move. Okay. And what you're doing, or you can do this from from your elbow and you wanna make sure that your whole arm is kind of not locked, but just not moving. So not, not drawing from your wrist, but drawing from your elbow and making these long lines across like this. Or actually, if you draw without moving your elbow, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have this like radius, your elbow is gonna become a radius and, and you're gonna draw a curve line. And this is actually how you, this is another helpful way of drawing a circle. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're kind of pivoting from your shoulder and draw all the way across this way, okay? And that's how you get the long movement of drawing without moving your wrist, okay? So doing that again, practicing long, and this is not a homework assignment that I wanna see, but this is something that I think that you should all do. Okay. The next thing, once you've done that, is you want to do a series of short lines. And practice drawing short lines. And practice trying to get them all exactly the same, as precise as you possibly can. Okay. And this is how, as an artist, you become the master of your tool. You want, and by the way, look at my pencil, how it's getting really dull. I need to sharpen it. Hold on. We'll talk about why it's important to use the, uh, use a sharpened pencil. So here's the next thing you can do. And um, now I've, I've seen these exercises. I actually got these exercises from another artist. I can't remember who it was. I really wish that I did so I could give them credit because I did not come up with this. And another thing that I'm really uh, enthusiastic about is as an educator, I love to learn. And I love to learn from other artists, but I also love to credit other artists when they come up with something because I want everyone to know that I did not make this up. I'm just, I'm just the messenger of a message that has been created. Okay. You don't say, Larissa taught me how this. Larissa showed me how to do this thing that she learned from someone else, whatever. And then you can create this process. Okay. So the idea is to repeat, 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 repeat. Do that over and over again. Okay. All right. I think that's it on that. Let's keep going. So I'm going to switch, stop sharing. Oh, you know what I, you know what I did? That's what I should have done is I should have, that's what I did. I did that wrong. Okay. I'll remember to do that next time. I realized what happened with the, the screen and why that wasn't big enough. Okay. Yeah, we were discussing in the chat, um, some people were having issues with it, but when you have like the dual screen going up, um, I spotlighted the one where you were drawing, Larissa. Um, yeah. Sometimes people might, like for me, I just had to like double click and that screen became larger, but other people, I think you might have to right click or spud in the chat had a way that I hadn't done before, but it was the swap video and screen share. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I forgot to stop sharing and then um, switching over to my 
camera like that. So next time I will do that, I will stop sharing and then I will draw over here. Okay, I'm gonna do that in a minute. So I'm gonna switch to here. I have, okay, I haven't done this before, so. Alrighty, so I'll do that. I have to do this and then I have to do this. Okay, now line, that's how you draw a line. Now, what's next? Maybe you've already, okay, so you already know how to draw a line in straight lines and that's great. Now, what do you do? <laughs> um, let's get rid of this one. Oops. Okay, oh, is that the right one? No, okay, draftsmanship. All right, so that's what I was talking about, the ability to manipulate your medium. Now, the reason why you want to use sharp pencils is because let's say um, you're drawing and you are drawing with a thick, thick pencil here. What happens with the edge of this form when and when you're getting into precision is that with this line here, the edge is precise because it's very thin. With this line here, the edge is imprecise because you have this thickness on this form, on this line here. This is now, it's almost not even a line, it's, it's almost a shape because it has a width to it, okay? There's a width over here and a width over here. Now this kind of sketching is fantastic when you're doing ideation drawings, when you're trying to come up with a character or you're trying to develop something from an idea. I love drawing with a real thick line because it helps me or it helps anyone to kind of create something from nothing. And then you can kind of sculpt your, your forms this way. Um, and this is great. But when, when it comes to the exercise that was, we're gonna be doing today, I really want you to make sure that you're using a sharp line, whether you're using pen or a mechanical pencil or whatever um, digitally, just make sure that you're using a sharp medium, okay? And that's how you can manipulate your mediums and not let them manipulate you. Another thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of um, line quality is let's say you have a line that you need to do and not digitally, but drawing traditionally because there are tools that you can use digitally like the Lazy Nozomi or the, you know, the line smoothing thing. These are great tools. They're not cheating at all. They're fantastic things that we can use as artists to improve the look of our work. But if you're working traditionally, let's say if you want to, um, if you're an animator and you wanna do cleanup drawings of your work and you're doing that um, by hand, um, or if you're just trying to draw a, uh, you know, a, a long curvy line, what I usually will do is I will draw that through a series of lines, okay? And this is another thing that requires precision too. And what this does, and you can see how my cursor is retracing what I've already drawn and adding to the direction of that line. And this takes, this takes practice, but this is another way of masking your medium. And additionally, what you can do is, and I didn't do this on the pencil exercise, but what you wanna be able to do is draw that line. Let's draw that again draw on top of that same line exactly where it is over and over and over again. It's almost like you are, you know, kind of digging um, this deep path on your paper. Um, but with that ability to retrace your line and doing it in a way where you're retracing your, your movement over and over again, this will give you really good hand-eye coordination, um, and this is how you can um, kind of manipulate your medium and create really clean lines in your work, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, all righty, next. How do we create shapes? Well, shapes are basically lines connected, okay? And being an artist who is communicating ideas, how do we do that? We do that by the creation of flat shapes and turning them into three-dimensional shapes so that they look like three-dimensional form or believable things that floating in space that we can relate to and have an emotional reaction from and then look at and feel something. Um, there's that whole process. So what we wanna do is first talk about how to draw shapes, which is what this whole class is about today is drawing shapes. 
um, and how we can make those flat two-dimensional shapes and turn them into three-dimensional forms. So every shape, everything in the world is based off of some kind of form. And that form is based off of a flat symmetrical shape, if you will, circle, square, triangle, rectangle, okay? These are your basic um, symmetrical shapes. Now we also have organic shapes like this, you know, squash and kidney bean and cucumber and you know this kind of bizarre looking shape down there. Those are also shapes, but those are organic. So what we want to be able to do as artists is create this feeling of three dimensional form from nothing. And how do we do that? We do that by creating the sense of form on the page by directing our line in a particular way so that this flat shape then suddenly looks like it's a three-dimensional form, okay? How do we do that? With contour lines, okay? So with this sphere here, let me just take a new color here, okay? So with this sphere here, okay? By taking these two lines and crossing it across the form, let me see if I can, I have my Clip Studio set up to automatically save every five minutes so I don't lose anything. Okay, so this circle then becomes a sphere because I've simply drawn a contour line that crosses or a curve line that crosses this way and a curve line that crosses this way. It's still an illusion of a shape, but now what we're communicating is the illusion of a two uh, of a three dimensional shape. Okay, same with the square. How to create the illusion of a three-dimensional form by the addition of these lines back here, which follow perspective, what we understand to be perspective and form. And now we have the illusion of a three-dimensional shape. Same with the uh, triangle by creating a, an ellipse at the bottom of that triangle shape instead of a straight line or a diamond at the bottom of that, then suddenly we have either a cone or a pyramid, okay? And that is basically the gist of it. Now, depending on the way that you draw your lines on this shape, it will give you the information as to whether or not it is flat like this, or if it's three-dimensional. These lines right here, crossing the form from top to bottom, this makes it look flat, but it also could be a flat form that has depth this way. Okay, with a thickness. And it, that could be that we're looking at it from the top down, okay? But the second we take that shape and we draw a contour line that follows the curvature of the edge of the form. And not only that, but the important part in this drawing these contour lines is where it connects to the form here, okay? Or to the shape, okay? Because when we draw these lines and they curve around the edge here, this gives us the illusion that this line is wrapping around and going back underneath the bottom of the form, okay? And it's these places here that really solidify the feeling of this is a three-dimensional form. So if you're sketching right now, you could probably try this, draw a bunch of beans, or a bunch of um, forms on your paper. And you can practice by drawing lines that follow and wrap around the form. And you can do that either by drawing one clean line in one go, or the way that I showed you before where you're retracing your steps. And as you get towards the edge of the form, you wanna kind of trace over like it's almost like you're you're following, running along the edge of the wall, and then you're tracing the line. And you know, if you've you know roller skating's coming back in, I don't know how many of you are roller skating. I started roller skating a few months ago. It's amazing. Um, but you know, you like when you're roller skating and you're kind of like putting your hand against the wall. If you're like you know worried that you're going to fall, it's kind of like that. You're you're taking that line and you're kind of um, it's like you wanna draw a line that goes across and then it's almost like you're skating against the wall and then you kind of run into it, 
And that's important and that's better and that's different than just like running into it, okay? When you just run into the wall, what happens is that this feels a lot flatter, okay? It feels flattened and squished. But when you run your line against the wall or the edge of the shape before you connect to it, that has that illusion of you know lines on a basketball or lines on a tennis ball that the line is curving around. And it's in that area where you can really get that feeling of three dimension, okay? The shortcut is to just, you know, do this. Well, yeah, that works and it gives a feeling of form, but this almost looks like a coffee bean. So what, and we'll talk about this when we draw the circles, but this, when you're drawing a contour and it follows the edge and skates across the, the interior shape, that's when you can get really nice looking three-dimensional forms, okay? And why is this important? Because we need to do these things when we're creating guidelines for our you know, heads, when we're doing character designs or any, anything else, okay? All right, moving along. First assignment. 100 3D spherical orbs, okay? Orbs in space. Now, how do you do this? You can do this on paper and pencil or on with paper on pencil. You can do this digitally. If you do this digitally, I'm gonna ask you that you do not use a lazy Nizumi, that you do not use any kind of smoothing thing. Like I have stabilization here, do not use that, okay? That's going to be against your purpose for this exercise. The purpose of this exercise is to improve your ability to draw smoothly without a crutch, without a tool. I know, dang it, Sammy, you got to do it. I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to help yourself, this is how you do it. Okay. So how do you do this? All right. I'm going to show you, I'm going to switch back to my camera, stop sharing. I'm going to do this the right way. Okay, now, here we go. All righty, so you move this out of the way. All right, so just like you drew before with your shoulder, okay, when you're drawing a circle, you want to freeze gun, freeze ray, your hand, right? So your hand is completely not moving, okay? Not like this. You're not gonna be drawing with your wrist. You're gonna be drawing with your whole arm, okay? And that means you're gonna be rotating from your shoulder, right? Let's see how my whole arm is moving, okay? My whole arm is moving all to move this pencil, all right? And when you draw from your shoulder, you're gonna have better control of your, of your line, all right? Okay. How do you draw a perfect circle? All right, well, this is how I do it, okay? Before I even begin to draw a circle, okay? And as I'm doing this, I'm keeping my hands, my hand is in line with my arm and my, I'm moving my shoulder here. What I do is I hover over the paper before I begin to draw the circle. And I, because drawing a circle really is through muscle memory and understanding how to draw it rather than, you know, just uh, drawing it on your own. You've got, to, you've got to kind of create a muscle memory in your, in your body so that it understands how to draw a circle. So you're hovering and then you slowly put your pencil down and you draw a circle. Okay, so yeah, I did that. So will you draw a perfect circle the first time? Probably not, um, but that's okay. What you wanna do is practice. So let's say you draw a circle and it looks like this, okay? Oh, it's a little wonky, it's an oval. All right, well, what do you do to adjust this? What you have to do is look, it's too long this way which means that your vertical move or your horizontal movement is too long, which means that the next time you draw this, you need to increase your horse, your, sorry, your vertical movement, okay? So then you increase your vertical movement. Perfect circle, okay? Now it's not just one line. Do you notice how it's several lines, okay? And that's okay if you need to kind of sculpt it, right? 
it's okay to sculpt that circle because what you're doing is you are getting in the habit of developing a sculptural ability and retracing your line. So let's say you're drawing circles and they keep turning out like this. And you just can't get it right. Well, you have to look. Your line is too fat. It's too horizontal. That means you have to adjust on the vertical, which means you have to move your arm a little bit higher back and forth this way, okay? Now, this exercise is 100 spheres in space, okay? What you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your paper like this or your canvas or your digital canvas, okay? And you're just gonna draw circle after circle after circle. And you can count as you're doing it. Now, do they all have to be the same size? No, in fact, I would like them to not be the same size. I would like some of them to be small and some of them to be large, okay? You can kind of have fun with it, like fitting them in like puzzle pieces. Even the smaller ones, I'm not drawing like this. I'm not using my hand. My hand is frozen. I'm using my shoulder to draw, okay? Now, when you do this over and over and over again, and you've drawn a hundred spheres, are you done? No, you're not done. Because now we need to make these, because these are circles, they're just flat until we add some kind of contour line to make these circles look like three-dimensional forms, okay? Now, there's several ways that you can do this, right? One way that I like to do it is I like to use contour lines, okay? So we talked about the contour lines and how when you, let me zoom in a little bit, Let's see if you guys can see that a little bit better, um, is, okay. Remember, you wanna skate across the edge of the form here, go all the way across to the interior of the shape and then skate the interior of the form like this. Okay, so that's one line. And then what I can do, remember I told you how when you, um, you, can, you can pivot from the elbow like this. Well, another way to draw curved lines is to pivot and not use your fingers but use your whole hand and pivot from your wrist, okay? And when you pivot from your wrist and you adjust your paper, and this is how animators draw, this is why animators use a circular table that they can rotate so that they can use the natural curvature of their arm to, excuse me, to draw really nice clean lines, okay? So I'm gonna use the natural curvature of my hand and I'm gonna draw curved lines. Ooh, that's not that great. Okay. Now, what does that do? That does two things, okay? This creates form. It also creates tonal value, okay? Now, tonal value, what does that do? That gives us a direction of light. The light is coming from here because I have these lines drawn here. These create this feeling of a shadow, okay? And when you do that consistently with all of the curved lines consistent across the page, what that does is it gives the illusion of light. And it gives you the illusion of form. Okay. Doing that, and what I can do is I can rotate my paper and I can reinforce these pencils, these lines. Okay, do you see how I did that with a series of sketches? I could. Could I do it that way? I sure could, but I wanted to be really careful on that. And maybe that looks a little bit messy, but that's okay. Okay. All right, so that does two things. It creates a feeling of form and it creates a feeling of tonal value, right? The third thing that we can do is create a feeling of three-dimensional space. And the way we do a feeling of three-dimensional space is by overlapping forms in front of another. So let's say you've got your whole page and some of your circles are running, you're running out of space. 
what you can do is you can actually overlap some of these circles. Okay, and now once you've got these overlapped circles, what you wanna do is decide which of these circles is in front and which of the circles is behind. And how do you do that? By reinforcing the line of one form and then reinforcing the edge and how that connects to a form next to it. Okay, so now what I've suddenly done just by creating these two lines is I've created a feeling of three dimension that this form is in front of this form, this form is behind the other form, okay? So I'm doing three things by overlapping my shapes, I'm creating depth and three dimension. And that's really what we wanna be doing in drawing. We want to be creating this illusion of depth and form. And the easiest way to do that is by practicing this exercise of creating these spheres and being able to manipulate your pencil to create a circle and then to create this feeling of depth and form. Now, that's your first exercise, okay? I'm gonna switch over. Okay, so first exercise, 100 3D spherical shapes. And if you want to go next level, you're going to add those contour lines and create that feeling of light, okay? That, that feeling of light um, and depth. Now, some of these look like they're really far away because they're completely encased in shadow. And some of them look like they're more in the forefront. Okay, it's really up to you. Now, when you draw, go on here. When you draw lines like this, this does not service the feeling of form. This flattens the form out. So it's really important that you're using these lines that follow the form, skate across the edge of the interior shape, and the idea of overlapping shapes. And the overlapping shape is basically, it's like you're creating a T, okay? A T. Where's that T? Oh, there it is. Okay. This is a T. All right, just do the right layer. This is a T. This is a T. This is a T. Okay. It's really simple. Just by creating that T, you're creating one form in front of the other. I think that's it. Okay, next. Oh, actually, sorry, I wanna go and lighting your orbs. Okay, so if you're gonna light your orbs, you wanna make sure that you have one consistent lighting source and that all of your contour lines are drawn consistently on you know, the opposing side of that light, all right? Oh, that's it, okay, moving on. One page of cylinders. That is your next part of the assignment, is one page of cylinders. Okay, so and how do you do this? All right, well, a cylinder is basically a square, or I'm sorry, a rectangle with an ellipse on the top and the bottom, right? So we go, we create a, a two-dimensional shape like this. We draw ellipses around it, and then suddenly we have a cylinder. Now, depending on where you now you can draw, let's, let's talk about this this way. Okay. So when, let's do it like this, here we go. Drawing an ellipse like this through the form gives us the feeling of three-dimensional form, but depending on whether or not you draw an ellipse, an entire ellipse on the top of that shape or the bottom of that shape will give us the illusion of whether or not we are looking at the top of the form or for looking at the bottom of the form. Does that make sense? So by creating an ellipse on one side or another, it gives us the illusion of whether or not we see the top or the bottom, okay? Now, should your ellipses 
or sorry, should your cylinders go all wonky crazy? Yes, have fun with it, okay? You can even have them intersecting forms, right? The idea is that you're still doing that same basic thing of you can create, um, let me zoom in here. What you can do is take your practice of creating curved lines and using that, that ability that you now have, right? That you're practicing to create really nice, clean curved lines and then drawing ellipses within them. And what you can do is as you're drawing, let me draw, switch pencils. As you're drawing the ellipse through the form, you can emphasize one edge of that. And as you draw these ellipses, they can thin out. And as they thin out, what happens is the perspective of or the point of view of this ellipse or the cylinder changes. I always think of Tim Burton when I draw these because Tim Burton likes these types of things for their long, I always think of um, Beetlejuice, yeah. All right, so you want to make sure that these are curving the right way so that they feel like they're kind of turning as tubes in space, like you're drawing little macaroni noodles, you're drawing little straws, you're drawing these things that are kind of going, um, going in space, okay? This one's fun because this one, let me redraw this. You can create a feeling of depth, three-dimensional depth. By drawing two ellipses and making them kind of like it's going back into space. This and then by drawing the ellipses going through them like this. And making sure you're skating the interior of the shape. Okay. Now you've got a real feeling of depth there. Oops, let's do this. And all of a sudden you've got, you know, you've got this real feeling of depth where you've got this form that's coming out at you. It's almost foreshortened, okay? Some of these are really not that great, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I'm not looking for perfection in any of the assignments. What I'm looking for is your pencil mileage. I'm looking for you to do them, do the exercises and get them done. Just do it. Like don't, do not go for perfection, go for pencil mileage, okay? That's what I really am looking for. Now, in terms of how to draw an ellipse in perspective, well, this is really interesting. So actually, oh, let me do that real quick. Um, yeah, another thing is that what you can do to practice, like if you're not sure how these ellipses would turn in space, okay, what you can just do is draw a series of ellipses that are kind of overlapping one another. Okay. You can, and this is kind of like drawing a slinky, and you can make them vary whether they're, they don't all have to say the same width. This is the width. No, they can increase in width. Okay. And as they increase in width, what's going to happen is that the point of view of these ellipses are gonna change, okay? So then if we were to, to take this and then create afterwards, we create a line that connects these together. And you follow as best as you can and create to create a smooth line between these forms, okay? 
you've got this tube. And I really like doing it this way too. This is really fun because this allows for discovery, okay? This is a good way to doodle when you're talking on the phone or you're in a Zoom meeting that you don't wanna be in or you can do it right now. Hopefully you all wanna be in the Zoom meeting. I think that you do. Okay, so once you've done that, then the idea is to then reinforce one edge of these. And remember you're skating the interior shape. And by doing it this way, you'll see how you suddenly will get a feeling of this depth. Okay. And at some point, I can switch directions. And if I, let's see, let me just, yeah, I'll switch here. I'm gonna switch drawing the ellipse from one side to the other side. And what happens is now the perspective or the point of view of our vantage point looking at this ellipse or these, the cylinder suddenly changes and now it's coming towards us instead of going away. I'll just keep going with these. Okay. So either way, if you draw, if you start off drawing a cylinder by giving yourself these, in, these exterior edges and then drawing your ellipse on the top, or on the bottom, and then continuing with drawing the contour line across the form in this way. This is one method of drawing cylinders in space and practice changing whether or not you add the ellipse to the bottom of the form or the top of the form, top of the line. This one's getting a little flat. Now, how do I adjust that? I'm just gonna switch to my eraser, redraw that. Remember, skate, skate the interior edge. I really want to harp on this because this is something that it's just such a simple concept that if you can get it and add it into your repertoire of skills that you are doing, it is really gonna make a huge difference in your ability to draw something that looks three-dimensional, okay? It's all in that tiny little edge right there. It's all about this little edge right here that gives you the idea that something is, is really three-dimensional rather than flat, okay? Now, what I was going to do is talk to you about how to draw an ellipse in space, an actual ellipse, okay? Not just an oval, but an ellipse, which is a circle drawn in perspective. So this is basically how you draw a circle in perspective. Let me go here, okay. So a circle is perfect, right? It's perfect, um, fit perfectly inside of a square. Let me go and draw, let me do, um, let me switch here. No, let me do, let me do, there we go. Okay, so a circle will fit completely inside a square, right? And a square has four equal edges, four equal sides, right? So, oops, what happened? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know what happened. All right, straight line. All right. A circle fits inside of a square perfectly. One way to draw an ellipse in space is by understanding how the ellipse is drawn just as on a flat surface or you know uh, two-dimensionally like this. So what you would do is draw a square, draw diagonals through that square, and then draw, oh, let me do that again. Draw lines that cross 
once you get the diagonals that will tell you where the center of the line center of the form is and then you draw um, horizontal and vertical lines through that point right there okay now an ellipse drawn in space is basically that same thing but what you're doing is you're drawing an ellipse an ellipse is basically that circle in space but at an angle you're viewing it from a different perspective well, if you're looking at a plate from the front, from the top, it's a circle. But if you change the angle of that plate and you're looking at it as you put it on your table, it becomes an ellipse. So what you do then is you create this feeling of this space. Draw this here. Draw it there. That's not quite in the center. Okay, let me see if I can do this. This way. That's not quite, let me try that again. Okay. What? It always takes me a little bit. Okay, there we go. I could probably put that on a different layer, but that's all right. Nope, that's not gonna work. Okay. So the idea is that the ellipse is going to fit inside of that square drawn in perspective. And we're gonna get to drawing squares in just a minute. Um, but first, the ellipse is this circle that fits inside of the space. So how does that work? Okay. You're drawing this by hand, you're drawing your flat, you're drawing, this is why you gotta learn how to draw your, your flat lines, your straight lines. And what's gonna happen is you wanna make sure that the circle, excuse my saving, wanna make sure that the circle is touching these four points on the square. One, two, three, four. This one's a little fat. One, two, three, four, okay? One, two, three, four. And you still want to skate inside the surface or inside the shape. And you want to kind of wrap that around. And we'll get more into perspective and in later in the class. That is basically how you draw an ellipse in perspective. So if you wanted to draw an ellipse in perspective this way, you would draw your diagonals. Find your center line there, figure out where your four points are. And those four points are where you would connect your circle. Okay, now the difference is that I want you to notice, well, I don't know if you'll be able to notice this or not. You still want to keep this rounded. Okay. Now this is how we draw a cylinder in perspective. And now if this one were lower, uh, we'll get into the boxes later. Now, because this is lower on our viewpoint, we're going to see more of a wider more of a curvature on that ellipse there. Okay. Now, how does it work? Oh, like this. Okay. So, drawing a cylinder in perspective, we'll get into boxes in a minute. But if you were to draw really quickly just a box like this, like a one point perspective box like this, and draw the top. This is messy. Draw the bottom. That's also messy. <laughs> and draw your ellipse there. Draw the edge of the cylinder from the corner there. That should line up with the middle the center line there. And then you draw the ellipse here. Then this is a cylinder. Oof. This is a cylinder in space. 
Okay. But you can always, you don't have to worry about that. If you wanna just do your noodles, that's great. If you wanna just do this exercise here, that's great too. The idea is just to understand how to create the feeling of three-dimensional um, three dimensional cylinders in space. Starlina says, excited to practice and build strong fundamentals. I think it's easy to get overwhelmed when first learning how to draw. So this has been a nice reminder that it all starts with very simple shapes and lines. Everything is just simple shapes, simple shapes. Okay, we're moving on. 320. I normally would teach this class in an hour and a half and I'm giving myself two hours to this class because I realized that there's so much that I never was able to cover. Um, so here we go. Boxes, boxes in space. All right, so I'm using Clip Studio, which is this really great perspective tool that I think I, and I've never done this um, particular demonstration before using Clip Studio. So I'm gonna do that right now. But the idea is that just like you drew your ellipses, your cylinders in space, you're gonna draw your boxes tumbling in space. Okay, so how do you draw? There we go. How do you draw a box? And how, how do you draw a box so that it looks like it's actually in perspective, okay? So you may have learned this basic way of like drawing a box here. Let me go. Okay. This is how I learned how to draw a box. When I was a kid, you draw a diamond. And you make lines from that diamond down. And then you actually, is that the, the, this isn't the way I learned how to do it. No, this is the way I learned how to do it. I'm so sorry, I forgot, it was this way. Yep, here it is. You draw a square and then you draw another square. Draw this. All right, you draw two squares that overlap. And then you connect the corners of those squares and bada bing, bada boom, you have a box, right? 30 minutes of bonus content, there you go. Okay, but that is just a box, but not in perspective from a vantage point, okay? This is three-dimensional. It's giving the illusion that it's a three-dimensional form on a two-dimensional surface, but it's not giving us necessarily a vantage point of where, where this is in space, okay? So that's gonna rely on us understanding a little bit more about vantage points and vanishing points, actually. Um, and this is how we do it. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Let's, this is, this is the new bonus content of my, and this is the untraveled un, un path that I'm gonna go to right now. I haven't done yet. Okay, so I'm gonna look for my perspective rulers here. I'm gonna go to view uh, ruler and uh, nope, that's, that's not it, Larissa. Okay, I should have done this before. Um, here we go, perspective ruler, okay. Okay, oops, <laughs> let's do it like this. All right, I'm gonna put a vantage point over here and I'm gonna put a vantage point over here. Okay, oops. All right, let's try to draw now. Let's see what happens. Okay, all right, there we go. This over here is a vanishing point. This over here is also a vanishing point. All righty. What we're gonna do is we wanna be drawing our squares so that they have that the, the uh, top, so that, These lines are going to one vanishing point. And let me draw this. These lines 
are going to another vanishing point. Okay, and if I draw this without the ruler, what happens is that, um, actually I'll do it like this, okay. So the center of these two lines is this one right here. Okay, you have the outer and the outer edge, and this is the center here. Now, this one, the center vanishing, the center line is here, okay? Now what's gonna happen is that you can draw, oh, and there's this one too, sorry. We need to draw a third. These lines, just basically all the edges of your boxes, instead of them being parallel, okay? Draw that again. Instead of them being parallel, like they all are now, we're gonna draw them so that the middle line is like your key foundation line. And these lines, instead of being parallel, they're going to converge or go towards this line here, center line, okay? And we're gonna do that for all of these edges, right? So if I take this one here, instead of drawing these all parallel, these two lines here, are going to converge towards the center line. And these lines here, instead of being parallel, these will converge towards the center line, okay? Now, how sharply they converge is going to show you how close or how far away the vanishing point is. I know this is this is a lot of stuff. This is a lot of stuff, but let's do this. Okay, I I, I think on this one I only have two vanishing points. Let me um. So that's okay. I'm gonna go back to my ruler. Put that on. Okay. So if I draw a line here, these lines are parallel. And that's okay. These lines are parallel. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw, let me draw, actually, let me, let me, I'm sorry. Let me just keep the colors the same so that we are all on the same page, okay? So these lines are parallel. Now I'm gonna take this here and these lines here, so. Oops, look at that. These lines are converging to this point over here. This is the vanishing point. Now these, let's get this color here. And these lines over here are converging oh, to this vanishing point all the way over here, okay? Now, if I add another perspective, um, let's see here. Uh, is that gonna work? I think, let's try that. There we go. And um, yeah, I think that should work. Let me move this. Okay. I'm gonna put, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move these vanishing points, okay? I'm gonna move them really, really close. This is a third vanishing point. See, I have three. I have one, oops. I have one vanishing point. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer. Let me move this out. I'm gonna move all these vanishing points so that they're super, super close. Okay. And then you're gonna see what happens because all of my vanishing points are close. All right, let's do another. Oops. Will that still work? Will that work? No, let's go back. I'm over there. Okay. Actually, when I'm, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna move this. Okay, here we go. Okay. Let me take my colors again.
these three lines are converging to this vanishing point here. These three lines here, I'm gonna converge to this vanishing point over there. Oh, I'm gonna do this again. There we go. And nope, sorry, I'm pulling them the wrong direction. There we go. They need to go this way. Okay. And then these vanishing points, the blue ones, are going to go this direction over here. Actually, why is this one there? That doesn't need to be there. I was confusing myself. Okay. So look at how when I get rid of these lines here, here, and here, I have a cube, but I want you to notice how warped it is, okay? Because my vanishing points are all super, super close to each other, right? And I can do this again. If I, this line right here is actually my horizon line. We'll talk about that, but that is your eye level. Horizon level is your mm, eye level. That means that you are looking at this thing your eyes, let's put them actually on the eye level, Larissa. Your eyes are here. These are eyes. <laughs> That's where your eyes are. And the reason why we see this box, the top edge and the bottom edge like this is because we are looking at it from the center right here. Now, if I were to draw a box above this eye level here, I'm just gonna draw a box here, oops. I'm do this on, and I'm not going to turn on. What's happening now is we can see the bottom of that box because we are underneath it. Our eyes are below it. And if I draw a box down here, I can see the top of it because it's below my eye level. It's just like if you were to take a cube or you know a box, I'm gonna grab my Kleenex box here. This is eye level. <laughs> this is where you're seeing the box at eye level. But the second you put it above your eye level, you can see below it. And the second you put it below your eye level, you can see above it, that simple. All right, so how do you do this shorthand without these perspective guidelines? Okay, real quick. Typically, when you're doing your perspective and your, your um, let me get to the uh, ruler here. Oops. Vantage points, we don't really want our vanishing points to be really close because you see how warped that was? We want our vanishing points to be far away. Okay. So, there we go. And I'm going to just duplicate. Can I duplicate that layer? Yes. Okay. Nope. I'm going to clear everything on that layer. Turn that layer off. Okay. All right. Here we go. Now, when I draw a box that's, oops. When I draw a box that's on the eye level, that's right along with the eye level, I'm not going to see the top or the bottom of it. Okay. But if I draw a box that's below my eye level, I will see the top of it. Oh, and this is really, and then if I draw a box above the eye level, I'm going to see the underneath of it. But how do you do this without using the perspective guidelines, okay? This is kind of a shortcut and I hope that it's not too confusing. Let me go there, okay, there we go. Basically what I usually will do is I will do a Y. Okay. The interior corner of a box is basically just like a letter Y, like this, right? You're breaking it down simply. 
what happens is that these are the interior corners of your box, okay? Then these lines here are the ones that would be parallel with this on the form. And what happens is that these need to go towards this line here. And you can see how that's happening here with this line. If I extend this all the way out here, these two lines, these two green lines, would be converging at some point all the way out here. Now, how, how sharp of an angle this is determines how far away your vanishing point is, okay? So I'll just do a quick little exercise here to show you, really small. Actually, let me just do this the way that I showed you how, with the Y, okay? And I'll do another Y here which is just the interior corner of my box, okay? So if I make these lines converge really, really closely, that means that my vanishing point is really, really close. It's right here, okay? Because look at the angle that these are turning, it's turning super quick. It's really, really sharp. But if I make these lines converge where they're not, let me do that again. Where they're, they're, they always have to go to the center line, okay? Where they're converging towards this line, but not as great of an angle. See how sharp that angle is and how that's not as, as sharp, okay? Then that means that these are converging a little bit further away. This is the center line here. And these are converging somewhere out here. Okay, now you're gonna do the same thing on this one here. I'm gonna converge these lines at a slight angle here. And I'll converge these lines at, a, at an angle like this. Larissa. Yeah. Um, so when you're drawing the boxes, should they all be in the same space or do you want people to try different vanishing points? Yeah, definitely different vanishing points. It's a good question. Um, I want them to be kind of tumbling, okay? So each box will have its own vanishing point. Each box will have its own vanishing point because it will be in a different place in space, all right? Um, here's the trick though. Sometimes when I do this exercise, people will get that the lines converge, but then they, they don't draw them that they converge. They're drawing them that they're going away from each other, okay? And then what that looks like is this. Instead of drawing, and then they draw the lines like this, instead of drawing them converging, they draw them going away from each other. See? And this one will go away from each other. And then this one goes, this one goes away from each other. Okay, then you end up with a Picasso cube, which is cool, but that's not what we want, okay? So the idea is to remember your three interior vertical, your three interior corners are what is helping you to, to, to anchor these other lines that are parallel, okay? So boxes in space, make large ones, make small ones. But the idea with this exercise is that you're trying to understand how to make something like a box, solid, three-dimensional, large or small, and they can be rectangles. They don't have to be perfect cubes. Um, but the idea is to understand how to, how to make these, okay? Um, make some small, make some big, make some overlapping one another, that's great too. Next level, the next level is that you take them and you add or apply lighting to them, okay? Actually, before I get into that, I wanna talk about this. Notice how my lines are overextended, okay? Um, Ron Williams, um, 100 of all three. No, I just want 100 spheres and I want just a lot of boxes and a lot of cylinders because, and I'm not gonna count them, by the way, no one's gonna count them. I just want, I just want you to practice them. Um, so in terms of, of drawing these lines, you're gonna be practicing drawing your, your draftsmanship and making these lines real straight. 
But I want you to, to remember to draw your lines the way we did in that first exercise and, and try to uh, overextend your lines, okay? And when you overextend them, you wanna try and make sure that, the, that they're meeting, it's like this point here where they actually, you know, where they actually will overlap in the corners, okay? And if you need to go back and erase these, you know, edges, that's fine. You don't have to, or you can kind of reinforce them. Oops. You can just reinforce them by redrawing them if you want, okay? Now, bonus, let's say, oh, I already know how to draw boxes, Larissa. I don't even know why I'm here. You're wasting my time. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to go the next level and you're going to think of how they would be lit. Where is it? Where is it here? Is this it? Is this it? Is that it? I don't think that's it. Oh, wait, no, it's up here. Nope, nope, that's not it either. Okay, let's make a new one. Okay. So then you're gonna think about how you have a light source, okay? And you're gonna use lines like this, straight lines like this to create value. And you want to make sure that all of your lines are following in the same direction, following the form of the surface plane, okay? And you're gonna light them or draw your lines consistently on one side. The opposing, the side opposing the light source, okay? Bonus, if you have, let's see here. Let me draw this one over here. I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to just overlap it. Here. Can people use um, like cross hatching or waves or stippling if they have a preference? Sure. Actually, let me do this again. <laughs> stippling will take forever. Please don't use stippling. But you know, if you want to, you know, and you want to take the time to do that, sh oof, go ahead. But in the interest of time, I would say you could just use. There you go. I'm gonna make this. Okay, so you know, if it takes you a little bit of time to kind of craft that box, that's okay. All right, bonus. Cast shadows. You know, I, and I don't, I'm not going to get into like what technically that shadow would be like because then we get into like a little bit more perspective, but, but that could be fun. That could be fun to do. Okay. Now, boxes in space. There's a bonus, there's an additional assignment if you so choose to do it, but this is what is going to be connecting this assignment to everything else, to your next week of figure drawing, okay? So I want you to do boxes in space. And the next thing is, we have a last, um, no, oh, there it is, the page of cubes, bonus lighting and shading, okay. Um, yeah, let me get rid of that one. Combined forms, okay? Um, yep. Okay, so combined forms means you're gonna take a sphere and a cube, and you're gonna combine them. Or you're gonna take a sphere and a sphere, and you're gonna combine them. Or you're gonna take a cylinder and a sphere, and you're gonna combine them, okay? Now, how, why? <laughs> the torso of the human figure, the rib cage and the hips. That's an egg or a sphere, uh, an egg shape and a box shape, or it's a cylinder shape 
and a sphere shape, but it's two, two different three-dimensional forms that are combined in the center with the midsection, the, 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 the stomach, the waist, okay? And so understanding first how to draw these three-dimensional forms is important for the next lesson, which is figure drawing, because you're gonna be, Danny's gonna be going over proportion and um, a simplified armature so that you understand how to draw a realistic human figure with believable anatomical proportions. Once you understand that, you're gonna be taking these three-dimensional forms and you're gonna be placing them on top of that armature as a simplified construction so that you can create a three-dimensional human figure, which then will translate to a three-dimensional character design, okay? Which you will be doing a few weeks into the session, okay? Combine forms. So the idea is, let's go a little over here. You can take a circle and another circle, okay? And we can combine them. And how do we combine them? Well, this is how I learned it from Glenn Vilpu, who teaches figure drawings. Um, and he, he kind of does it like this. You take these two forms and you pretend that you cover them up with like um, stockings or hosiery or pantyhose or whatever. And you think of how that form is connecting between the two, like wrapping around. It gets a little bit thinner in the center and then it wraps around the form like this. So we have, you know, two circles or two spheres that are connected like this, okay? Now, what happens, we have this, we're gonna bring this T idea of overlapping in here, okay? Because what we'll do is we'll create a circle, a sphere here. We're gonna overlap it with this two shapes here, okay? And we're gonna draw the outline here. And what we'll do is decide that this form here is gonna overlap this form here. But we don't want these two separate forms to be two separate forms. We want them to be one. So what I can do is create this feeling of connectedness on one side here, saving. Okay. And we have one combined form, okay? Here's your T right here, right? Additionally, what we'll do eventually or next time is we will be thinking about how a line that crosses over that form, remember the contour line, how that form would wrap from one form to the next to create that feeling of a combined form and what that would look like from one side or the other side. Let me try on a different color. No. Why that would wrap around this way and then come in and then come out this way. Okay. Um, Brianna asks if you can show a sample with two different shapes. Absolutely. Okay, so let's do two shapes. I will do a square or a cube and a sphere or a ovoid. Okay. And this is basically the beginning of drawing a figure. Okay. You're going to pretend that your form is connected with this kind of pantyhose or this really thin film. Okay. So, and it's tight. It's wrapping around the edge of the form on both edges here. Okay. And where it connects between these two forms in space, it, it pulls in. Okay. Okay. Now, so we have two forms connected into one, but how do we create the contour, the interior contour from both of these forms to make them continued one form, right? So you have to think about how the contour of this interior form or this form here, and remember how we drew the planes 
the lines to show the planes on this form here, how would those combine? Okay, like this. We wrap that line around and as we leave that form, we're following this edge here. We leave that form and then we jump and we follow the edge of this form here. Is that really, does that make sense? Remember, I'm sorry, I need to skate the interior of that form a little bit better. Okay. This is imagining wrapping around, it's pulling in. It's being taut, pulled at the corner and falls down, comes across this way, okay? Also, we would have, we can have a cross contour line here. I would wrap around this form here. Skate the interior edge of the shape, okay? And we could wrap a line like this. And even when we take this line here and wrap that line here, it then shows us the interior edges of the form, okay? So that's one, let's do another one. Change the angle on this one. Okay, how do we combine those? Remember, I'm going to actually do this overlapping line so this form feels like it's in front of that form. And I'm going to pull this so this feels a little taut. Yeah. Now I'm going to do a center line. Let's see. Let's do a center line here. And if this is too confusing for you, just stick with, you know, spheres and overlapping the form, you know, like I've done here. Um, and you can really play around with the idea or the concept of the overlapping line. And you can then even create, you know, this feeling of, let's say, a sphere with a sphere and they're connected with some kind of a cylinder. Okay. How are we doing on time? We doing okay. We are at 3.53. Cool, all righty. Okay, so, and then, you know, how would that, how would that have a center line coming across it? What would that look like? All right. Or maybe we can even change this. Ooh. So let's say you're just like, okay, Larissa, I already know how to do this. Okay. Give me something new, All right? Well, the idea is that you just, the whole basis of today was just so that you're understanding how to create something real from nothing. Okay. And by wrapping lines around a form, you can create the feeling of three dimension. Okay, you can get even really more crazy with it, get inventive with it. You're creating, and this is how you create worlds.
All righty. And the combined forms can be anything. Boxes, cylinders, spheres, cones. As long as there's some semblance of feeling that this is one form combined with many different forms. Oh my goodness, you guys, that is it. Okay, last. Here's your homework. Oh, wait, why do you need to do this? Why do you need to know this? Because character design. Character designs are made from three-dimensional constructed forms that you will be, that you'll be combining together. We'll be learning about design and how to design a, a character ultimately. But once you've designed the shape and the silhouette of that character, and you want to make that feel like it's in a three-dimensional believable space, you need to use constructed forms to draw a head. You need to understand how a sphere works. And we did a drawing heads and hands workshop um, just a couple of weeks ago, which was really great. You have to understand how a sphere works in space, how a cube works in space, so that you can understand how to turn the head and how to draw uh, uh, a head in space, okay? Understanding boxes and how those boxes fit into space help you place a character in an environment and help you to foreshorten that character, okay? Line, understanding how to draw a line helps you to create texture and it helps you to create patterns in an illustrative sense, okay? Which are interesting and varying, which bring more visual appeal to your work. And that's it. This is your homework. 100 spheres in space. You don't have to copy this because this will be in the, the Google file folder. 100 spheres in space, one page of cylinders in space. And maybe you already did your homework while we were in class, fantastic. Page of boxes in space, page of combined forms, okay? The things that underlined spaces, uh, sorry, spheres, cylinders, boxes combined, that's the title, okay? So you're gonna, Title, you're gonna name your file folders, or sorry, you're gonna name your files with first name underscore, last name underscore title. So it's gonna be Larissa Morant's spheres or Larissa Morant's cylinders, boxes, combined. Doesn't have to be combined forms, okay? Questions? I don't, we might have some questions slowly going in, but there is a lot of great chat and everybody said that they you know weren't bored by the basics basically really great to go over them again because like i know once you hear them a lot you think i already know them but literally all of us no matter where we are in our art journey can always revisit these squares circles and noodles noodles mm -hmm. noodles noodles okay all right so just nod your head if you got something out of it today all right that's good. I'm looking for that affirmation that I did okay. Um, did great. All right. Well, wonderful. Then um, we're going to go ahead and end this. If anybody wants to stay after, I'll just uh, keep the Zoom room open for another few minutes if you have a question. Um, otherwise, um, make sure your homework is in the Google file folder. I will be emailing you um, later. I will be emailing out to everyone the links to access the recording of this class. Um, along with um, the links to the Google file folder. Again, you should have it already, but, um, and um, any other information you need, okay? Thanks everyone. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. Or I'll see you tomorrow for graphic novels. Yeah, Larissa, so it's gonna be you and Caleb teaching that class? Yes. Okay, perfect.